Ladies and gentlemen of the Action Army, what is going on and welcome to another workout video. I did a survey on my YouTube channel and it turns out that 54% of you said that you want to see full gym vertical jump workouts. So I'm trying to listen to you guys. I'm trying to create the content that all of you want to see. So if I'm on the right track with this video, make sure that you leave a comment down below and let me know that yes, these are the type of workouts that you want to see. Also, if you're new here and you care about basketball, vertical jump training, and you want to get as explosive, as athletic as you possibly can, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and share this with one of your friends who got no bounce because you and I both know they're going to need it. Anyways, let's get into it. Today, we have a high volume vertical jump workout for bounce. And there's a few things that I want you to know before we get into this workout. Number one, this is a high volume vertical jump workout. So you'll definitely want a low intensity day, maybe even two two low intensity days after you get done with this workout so that you can fully recover and make those adaptations on your vertical jump. So that doesn't mean that you take complete rest days afterwards. Just make sure that you do some light mobility, some light skills training. You can focus on upper body, but make sure that you do not do intense vertical jump work the day or two after you do this workout. That is number one. Number two, this is a full gym workout. This isn't just body weight. This isn't just dumbbells. This is the whole nine. You're going to need a squat rack with some plates. You're going to need one resistance band, a heavy band if you have that. You're going to need two dumbbells, and then you're going to need a box or a bench to step on. Number three, if you have any knee pain, if you have patellar tendinopathy, patellar tendinitis, jumper's knee, patellar femoral pain, do not do this workout. It is just going to hurt your knees even more. Make sure that you tap in with one of my knee workouts instead on my channel. I got plenty of those for you. And last but not least, number four, this is a workout from my Beyond the Rim Strong and Bouncy program. So if you're interested in a program that is completely progressed and periodized for you, the link will be in the description and the pinned comment. But without further ado... Let's get explosive and let's make some gains. The first thing on the list today is our warm up. So you can do a dynamic warm up beforehand if you want to, but I did not do a dynamic warm up. I just got straight into my reverse sled to isometric warm up. So what I did was three sets of two minutes of a reverse sled to forward sled. So I'm just pulling the sled backwards, pushing the sled forwards, super set with Spanish squats for three sets of 45 seconds. The reason why we do two minutes of the re reverse sled is because we want two minutes in between each of our isometrics and better than just resting between two minutes in between our isometrics, we want to be moving and warming up our tissue, increasing tissue temperature for the next set of isometrics. So that's why we have three sets, two minutes of reverse sled, super set with three sets of 45 seconds of Spanish squats. If you don't have a sled, you can do reverse dead mills. If you can't do reverse dead mills, you really can do any two minutes of any dynamic warm up. You can shoot around with the basketball if you want. Just don't get caught up at LA Fitness running five pickup games before you do your workout, but you can really do anything for your two minutes in between your sets of Spanish squats. The next thing that we did was a single single leg knee extension isometric. And I did two sets of 45 seconds for this one as well. If you want to keep your knees healthy and you want to stay away from jumper's knee, patellar tendinopathy, isometrics are where it's at. And I have found with myself and my athletes that three sets of 45 second Spanish squats and two sets of 45 second single leg knee extension holds are where it's at. So that is what I did. I did five sets of isometrics, three Spanish squat, two single leg knee extension hold, and then I was ready for the workout. After my isometrics, what I did was some low rim dunks. And whenever I do my low rim dunks, I make sure to do all four approaches. So I do my right, left, two foot approach, my left, right, two foot approach, my left leg, one foot approach, and my right leg, one foot approach. Today, I got up to dunking on nine, six, just something low intensity. And if you don't have an adjustable hoop, you can really do any plyometric here because our goal is just to fire up the central nervous system for the rest of the workout. So not too important. Just do any plyo that is going to get you ready for the rest of the workout. After that, we had our main movement for the day, which was box squats. You can do regular squats if you want to, but I like the box because it's a great cue to tap the box and explode up as fast as possible. So what I did was 30% of my one rep max for 10 reps. Then I did 45% of my one rep max for eight reps, 60% of my one rep max for six reps, 70% for five reps. And then I did three sets of two reps 
with 85% of my one rep max and make sure that you're controlling the weight on the way down, exploding up as fast as you can on the concentric portion of the movement. The intent is the most important thing for these box squats. You have to be moving the weight up as fast as you can because remember, Vertical jump is nothing more than a test of power. Power equals force times velocity, which just means that if you get stronger and if you get faster, you will get more powerful and you will jump higher. But remember that force equals mass times acceleration. So the mass right here is our back squat and whatever weight we have on the bar. Acceleration is the other piece of that puzzle. So the intent has to be moving the weight up as fast as humanly possible. After the box squats, the next thing that we did was we grabbed a resistance band and the heavier the band, the better. You want this to be challenging for you. We did band squats for three sets of 20 reps, superset with band good mornings for three sets of 20 reps. I told you guys this was gonna be high volume. So it's a 40 rep superset. Now we don't always want to go high volume, but the purpose of this workout is high volume and these are great because they force the stretch shortening cycle to get efficient and with the resistance band it's easiest at the bottom of the squat and it's hardest at the top of the squat where we need to be the strongest in that joint angle to jump as high as possible so three sets of 20 reps of band squats superset three sets of 20 reps of band good mornings to hit the post chain as well great superset for bounce after that we did front step ups three sets of six reps to get those quads strong in that anterior chain superset with single leg RDLs for three sets of six reps to hit that posterior chain. So for these, I will admit, it doesn't look like I'm being explosive. So Nathaniel Morton, what were you doing? I must have been daydreaming or something. But on these, the intent, the same thing, you want to be stepping up on the box as fast and as explosively as you can. And then for the single leg RDLs, I'd rather you get the movement down first, make sure that you can keep your balance and your stability. Then once your balance and your stability is good, then you can focus on in that stretch position at the bottom, moving all the way back up to the beginning of the rep as fast as possible. So three sets, six reps, front step up, three sets, six reps, and this is each leg, obviously. We don't just want one leg with bounce. We want to have bounce off of both legs. So great super set for bounce right here, front step ups and single leg RDL. And after that, we finish it off, we top it off with a little bit more posterior chain. We got the reverse hyper extension for two sets of 20 reps. And I already know what you're going to say, Nathaniel Morton, I don't have a reverse hyper. Well, fear not, you can just do reverse hypers on a regular hyperextension machine. And if you don't have a regular hyperextension machine, you can do dumbbell good mornings. And if you don't have dumbbells, well, you're on the wrong video. And boom, there you have it. That is it for this high volume workout day. What I did not show you in this video is after this, I went, I laid down and I did some belly breathing. I put on some music that was slower in pace because when you're working out, it's completely fine to have some pump up music. Music, but as soon as you get done with that workout, you want to turn on slow paced music and you want to do some deep belly breathing to shift into that parasympathetic rest and digest nervous system to stimulate recovery as quickly as possible. After that, make sure you get your first form protein shake. Yes, I'm sponsored, but they do have the best supplements on the planet. They're third party tested, meaning what they say is in the supplement is actually in the supplement. Plus they got clinical dosages. So the amount of the supplement that you need is actually what is in the supplement. Anyways, that is it for this video. Make sure you check out our supplements. Make sure that you check out my Beyond the Rim Strong and Bouncy program. And let's take our vertical jump to the next level. Leave a comment down below, subscribe, and I will see you all tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Peace.